Have you ever had things that go bump in the night? We have entered into a new year, and it's a new year that seems fraught with all kinds of situations. There's so many unknowns, and for me personally, there seems to be more unknowns in the year of 2014 than ever before. Our nation is in a terrible mess. The climate of our nation seems to be the worst that it has ever been in my lifetime. And our government seems to be totally out of control. Immor immorality is rampant. The crime situation is growing. And the list goes on and on and on. People are knocking each other out or knocking other people out just for the fun of it. People are killing other people just for the thrill of it. It's never been any worse than it is these days. And as we hear and read these kind of things that are going on, the thing that starts happening and the thing that starts trying to creep in is fear, F-E-A-R. Fear will try to come in and take over our hearts hearts and lives. From time to time, fear hits, hits all of us, and it hits us in different ways. For some, it may be a doctor's report. For others, it may be the bank account. For others, it may be some kind of news you've just heard that seems to spin your world out of control. The news is nothing but bad news, it seems. And if we aren't reading God's Word, hearing God's word, speaking God's word, there seems to be no hope. My nephew and my niece several weeks ago, Randy and Peggy Morris, uh, who pastor a great church, the Gulf Church in Indian Rocks, Florida, were sleeping. And in the middle of the night, they heard a huge bump. And as they heard this bump, and it woke them, startled them out of street, uh, out of their sleep, the kitchen light came on, and the things were just out of control, seemingly in their house. And their heart was thumping, and uh, uh, with trepidation, they got out of bed, and they started going, creeping towards the kitchen to see who was in their kitchen and what had happened, who had broken through and gotten into their space. And when they were able to view their kitchen, what they came to find out, a picture had fallen off the wall. And as the picture fell off the wall, it hit the light switch and turned the kitchen light on. How crazy is that? When I heard this story, this is where this message came. I heard God say, things go bump in our night. And I'm sure now that as they tell the story that they can't tell it hardly without laughing, but at that moment, it struck terror to their hearts. I remember when I was growing up, we had a dog. His name was Laddie. He was part collie and part wolf, but he was playful and just wonderful with people. And uh, my brother would dress him up in his little Cub Scout uniform, and, and we just thought it was the cutest thing and all that. Well, one night, we put him in the ba basement for the night. The basement in that house, we lived in a parsonage in Easton, Maryland. And the basement steps, the door to the basement, came into the kitchen, and my mom and dad's bedroom was on that level. And so during the middle of the night, my dad heard someone walk up the stairs in the basement, and then it would seem like they would struggle a little bit and fall. And then they would walk up the steps again and then seemingly fall again. And he was thinking, oh my goodness, a drunk has somehow gotten into our house and is not being able to maneuver the steps. And so dad got up and very courageously went to that door and swung the door wide open. And when he swung the door open, there was Laddie. And Laddie was having the time of his life. He was running up the stairs and then somehow rolling back down those stairs. And he thought it was the greatest thing. But my dad and my mom were having that trouble with fear coming in. There's an acronym for fear. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. In both of those situations, it was false evidence. 
it would appear that someone had broken into the houses and there was trouble coming. But when they found out what it really was, in neither case was it what they suspected it was. So it was false evidence appearing real. How many times have you had fear about something that was going to happen? You would think about it. You would lay awake at night thinking about it. And when it came to pass, even if it did happen, it was not like you thought it was going to be. And somehow you came through it. Or you were afraid something wouldn't happen. And as time passed, you found out that even if it didn't happen, that there was no problem. There was a way out. God makes a way out of our wilderness. And fear is such a wasted time and a wasted emotion. Their news is nothing but bad news these days, it seems. If we aren't reading God's word, hearing God's word, and speaking God's word, there is absolutely no hope. Jesus is our answer when things go bump in our night season. As the old hymn says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And folks, all other ground beside the Lord Jesus Christ is sinking sand. <clears throat> many, many years ago, my husband had some issues going on in his body and he went to our doctor to have it examined. And he ran back in after the doctor's visit to the house and drew me a picture. And he said, the doctor said that I could have cancer or it could be benign. And he said, they're gonna do more tests and if the polyps look this, like this, it will mean cancer. But if it looks like this, it means they're benign. And he had to leave suddenly and get to the church because he had an appointment. So he left me there with that piece of paper and beginning to stew. And I did what I only knew to do at that time. I went into our family room and took my Bible. And I knelt down beside our lounge chair and I said, Lord, I need a word from you. And God was so faithful and he started giving me scripture. I didn't even know where the scripture was located at that time. <clears throat> but I started thinking about those scriptures and it turned out to be Psalm 91. And Psalm 91 starts with, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. That word goes on down to say, Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right, right hand, but it will not come nigh me. Only with my eyes shall I look and I will see the reward of the wicked because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor any plague shall come near my dwelling. No evil shall befall us, and no plague shall come near our dwelling. How have we made the Lord our most high? We have believed on him. We have taken Jesus as our savior, and he is our refuge, and he is our strength. 
Verse 11 of Psalm 91, For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways, and in their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love on me because he has set his love on you, because he has set his love upon our world and our nation. Therefore, he will deliver us. He says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I shall call upon him. You shall call upon him and he will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And out of that scripture that day, I arose with a confidence in God about my husband's condition. I arose with strength in my heart. I arose with a song in the night and I knew it was going to be all right. It wasn't long after that that I went to the doctor myself. And as I was sitting on the table and I was um, swinging my legs, the doctor was talking to me and the doctor was giving me the hard cold facts. The doctor was telling me that HL indeed did have cancer after a test and that it was very serious and he possibly was not going to make it and he possibly couldn't pull through this because it was very serious and I needed to prepare for the worst. I needed to get myself ready and I'm sitting there with a smile on my face and when he got through I said thank you doctor for the facts. I said but I know a little word and I don't think you like this word very much and he said okay what is it and I said the word is miracle and he said no you're right I don't like that word very much. But you know, we did have a miracle. My husband did go through the surgery. He did have his time re of recovery, but he lived 25 to 30 years after that. It did not take his life. The Lord had given me a word and that word was strong and sure in my heart and in my life. I'm not the exception. You can hear from God. You can have a word from God. You can know in your heart of hearts, this is the way to go and do not depart from it. Isaiah 41 tier, 10 says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I am with you. Hebrews 1, and the last part of verse 5, out of the Message Bible. This is wonderful. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any way or any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, assuredly not. What a word from God. What a word from God wherever you are today. Whatever is your bump in the night is being. Whatever that bump that keeps you awake at night. Whatever. Jesus is with you. And Jesus said, I will never leave you. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. We've got to understand that when these fear tactics come in upon us, the word calls it a spirit. It's a spirit that's trying to come in and take residence. And we say, not in my life, not in my world, not in my family and my loved ones, not here, no way. And the verse goes on, but God has given us power and love and a sound mind. I declare today, I have power and love and a sound mind. 
I reject fear. I will not let the spirit of fear come into my home or over my life. I repent of fear that has come in in the past and I've allowed to come in. I repent of that and repentance is a turning from that. I turn from the spirit of fear and I take on the power and love and a sound mind from the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I present to you Jesus. Jesus is the one who saves, he heals, he provides, and he gives a song in the middle of our night. Jesus is love, joy, and peace. May this be a year that the name of Jesus becomes a name more than one name that we call upon but when we're in trouble. May Jesus become a reality to us in ways that we've never thought. May we see him as the person he is, the man he became, the man who died and, and rose again for you and me, the man that is seated at the right hand of the Father today for us. May we see him and may we know him as never before. May the revelation of Jesus Christ be greater in 2014 than it ever has been before. May we experience Jesus in the place of the things that go bump in the night. Praise God for Jesus. If you don't know this Jesus, there's one verse that's a favorite verse of mine, and it's Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't say that we confess our sins. It says, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Today I say, in the name of Jesus, if you do not know him, I pray that you will believe in your heart. You will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and you will be in that place of dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty. God bless you.